Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a Will I Buy It video. I do these videos every single Sunday and in these videos I showcase to you guys some of my favorite, well, or not so favorite or most noteworthy makeup launches of the past week and we basically sit down and we discuss about these certain launches and I give you guys my opinions on them. This video series was inspired by Samantha March and I will be listing her channel down below if you are interested in checking it out. Quick note before I start the bulk of this video I do want to say that I'm very sorry for not posting yesterday I was going to but um Friday night I just I honestly had like a really hard day and I didn't get a chance to edit and I didn't feel like staying up super late editing because I literally was such like in this really bad headspace and I just couldn't do it so I decided not to have a video up for Saturday and I'm really sorry about that. I know that I um, say that I post every single day and that is true for the most part. I do make it an effort to really just post that often. I love doing this and I love uh, just interaction and I love posting like YouTube videos. That's one of my favorite things to do but sometimes like I just have like a really bad day and sometimes I'm able to push through it and other times I'm not. So that's why I didn't post yesterday. I kind of want to just give you guys an explanation because I feel like if I'm posting, if I'm telling you guys that I'll post every single day and then I miss a day, I feel like I owe you guys an explanation. So that's pretty much it for like my little disclaimer of the day. So anyway, let's just get into the video. Okay guys, so the first thing that I want to start off from is this launch from Sephora and they're collaborating with Marvel and they're releasing a Marvel Heroes collection. And this is so weird, but I literally was thinking inside my head with like all the new Marvel trailers that would be so cool to do like a Marvel like mock-up collection and then Sephora launched this Marvel collection and I feel like I might do a redesign of this collection because for some reason I just don't like it. This is a limited edition collection and they're including a Black Panther highlighting palette, a Marvel Heroes mini kiss me balm trio, a Marvel Heroes double and lipstick and gloss in three shades, a Marvel Heroes double and eyeshadow pen, a Thor eyeshadow palette, a Marvel Heroes Invisilk face mask set, a makeup brush set, and metallic eyeshadow palette and uh, it's just I'm looking at this and it just I feel like they're trying to take the colorful makeup trend if you will which is I feel like I feel like I should call it a trend because we are seeing a lot of brands launching like colorful kind of makeup but it's they're launching it and it looks like this you know and I just feel like this could have been done better with all the interesting like Marvel heroes and with all of these uh, superheroes, if you will, I feel like they inspire like a color story that is not this. And I feel like this was just done in a very sloppy way. I wish that, that we could have had maybe like an interesting, like cool tone, like metallic look for Thor instead of like a rainbow palette. I wish that they could have done something with like the Black Panther theme and like made it a little bit more interesting. Like, I don't want to bash this because I feel like there's no need to. I just feel like this could have been done like in such like an interesting way. They really could have taken like the color palette, um, they could have thought of the costumes that these superheroes have, and they could have come up with something that's so cool and interesting, but instead they gave us this and I'm just not I'm just not into it. It's just it's just a little bit too rainbow esque for me. I want something that's a little bit more thought out instead of them just like throwing colors into a palette like which is what it looks like they did right here so i just am not too interested in this collection i wish that they could have just played with the theme more and made it a little bit more out of the box instead of so this is a rainbow palette and just so predictable i feel like this was very predictable and i don't like it so this is definitely a pass for me. Then I want to talk about this new Natasha Denona foundation. This is described as a foundation with a natural finish. It's radiant, lightweight, and long wearing, and they are releasing 20 shades. I'm not that interested in buying any new foundation, so I will say that this is a pass for me. I'm currently going into my foundation collection and trying to try out some of my existing formulas and trying to like just root out the ones that I don't like and the ones that I do like, I want to keep. So I'm already going through like a phase where 
where I'm just looking at my foundation collection and trying to evaluate which ones I'm keeping and which ones I'm not. So this is not something that I need, but I really do um, like seeing like this uh trend if you will of more and more brands launching like radiant foundation um products because right now i'm kind of into like this radiant like this very light coverage kind of foundation which is different from what we've been seeing in the last few years because a lot of brands have been releasing very full coverage very matte foundations and i personally am a little bit tired of that and I kind of want something a little bit different but this is a full coverage foundation so then again I'm not really interested in that because I don't really want a full coverage and this is going to be a full coverage but I do like the fact that it is a radiant foundation. I also really do want to mention this launch from Nikita Dragon and She's coming out with Dragon Beauty. She's going with this interesting dragon theme and she's releasing her products in these like dragon eggs, it seems, which I thought was a kind of cool idea. And it looks like the first product that she will be launching is going to be some kind of a lip product. Mm, and it's kind of like, and I'm kind of bored by it. I think it's because whenever I think dragon, liquid lipstick is not something that is not something that comes into mind first for me. She will expand it, I'm sure, but for first launch, this is not something that's really interesting to me. So this is gonna be a pass, definitely. And I don't really even wear like a brownie liquid lipstick anyway, and that's what it looks like this is. So yeah. Definitely a pass, not too interested in this. Then Jouer Cosmetics is coming out with a setting powder, and this is described as a soft focus hydrate and set powder. It's packed with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E, and it's supposed to be give a very blurring finish. I like the shade range. I mean, it looks like a pretty good shade range to me. However, I'm not too interested in like a new powder, so this is gonna be a pass for me. I will say that I haven't actually used powder in a long time. I just don't really like powders in my uh, face routine, so I'm very hard pressed to actually want to get a face powder for myself. Then I want to talk about a Nabla product. Nabla, Nabla is Cosmetics is coming out with a close up futuristic foundation and it is described as an innovative weightless ultra buildable texture that gives skin a three dimensional and naturally radiant matte effect. This is a matte foundation. So as a result, I'm not really interested in it. Um, I'm just not, you know. They're coming out with 20 shades and I'm like just not interested. I mean, again, I'm not really in the market for new foundations and this is a matte foundation, which is kind of decreasing my interest for it already. So this is definitely going to be a no from me. I also really want to talk about this from Makeup Forever. This is going to be a new eyeshadow palette called Let's Gold. And this is going to be limited edition. They have 18 shades and it's going to be $45. This is one of those uh, makeup palettes that looks so similar. Like a lot of these um, lighter shades look very similar. I mean, I do like the addition of rose gold in here. I feel like it's a pretty palette, but for some reason when I think gold, I don't think these colors explicitly. I think of something that's a little bit more saturated. I like golds that are very saturated, that are very like just bright and very metallic. And this seems to me to be a very like highlightery kind of palette. And I don't really let, want that. I don't really want that in my collection. And I feel like these colors will be very similar on the eyes. So that just turns me off of this collection completely. I'm just not interested. I am just not like, I don't really want this palette in my collection. I just feel like it's too neutral and considering that the theme is gold, it is a little bit not, it is a little bit unsaturated for my liking. I want something that's a little bit bright. When I think gold, I want to think of something that's very vivid. I want to think of really bright, really just saturated shades and I'm not really getting that from this kind of palette. Becca Cosmetics is coming out with a pearl glow highlighter and I'm just not interested. Becca has been a brand that has been really hyped up but for some reason I'm looking at it now and I'm not too interested in what they have to offer. I think that like the highlighters are cool and everything, but I already have a lot of highlighters. I have Champagne Pop from Becca and that's about it. I love Champagne Pop, but do I need more highlighters from Becca? No, I do not. 
I already have, again, so many highlighters. I have done a highlighter collection video, which I will put in the cards. But yes, I have highlighters that I already need to be using up. So I'm not in the market for a new highlighter at the moment. This is something that I really wanted to talk about, though. This is going to be a new launch from ColourPop Cosmetics. They're coming out with a Just My Luck palette, which is a green palette, and I am so excited because I personally love like the pink Ooh La La palette that they launched last October. I love that color story. I love having an exclusively pink with a touch of purple color story. And for a while, I was getting a little bit frustrated because their intention seemed to be that they wanted to come out with like different color stories based on different colors. But when they repackaged the Mar and the Soul palettes, as part of this like color story series it just didn't really make much sense to me because if you look at the mar palette it only has like about two or three blue eyeshadows in a nine pan eyeshadow palette and then the soul collection mm, same same story but this is a color story that i actually really do love I love the greens, I love how they have like different finishes, and the green shadows that are in here are not your cookie cutter greens. I feel like there are some unusual shades in here, and I love how they just took the theme green and then and they just went for it. The color story that resulted from it is absolutely beautiful, and this is definitely something that I do want to get. It's going to retail for $12, and it, and it does include nine shades, and I'm so excited about this. I really want to get my hands on this palette. Palette. I love green eyeshadow looks and I would love to create something with this palette. While we're on ColourPop, I do want to showcase this collection right here, which is going to be a spring collection. They have six lipsticks, an eyeshadow palette, super shock blushes, and jelly much shadows. I feel kind of like a hypocrite for saying this because this look that I have on today is very fall, kind of, in my opinion. But whenever I look at this collection, I think fall. I don't think a spring collection. I think of a summer transitioning into fall kind of color color palette or theme. I don't think spring, whenever I see this collection, I would have liked to see maybe some pastels, maybe maybe a lime green, a baby blue, a very light pink, something like that. But instead we have this collection right here, which I'm just not too interested in. I feel like the eyeshadow palette in particular is just not very spring in theme, which I'm not really into. So I feel like instead of um, these warm tones it would have been it would have been nice to see maybe some light pastel shades a lilac a green etc but instead we have this which, which in my mind is a little bit summer transitioning into fall instead of just spring artist couture is launching some glosses and they are going to be called the diamond lip tease glosses I will commend the brand for coming out with a variety of different shades. I am particularly interested in that lavender in the center. I feel like it's kind of cool. I also like the gold tone that's a little bit uh, lower than the rest of the shades. These are going to be retailing for $18 each, and I really do like them a lot. I think they're cool. I don't know if I'll be getting these myself because I probably should have mentioned this before, but I am on a low buy, which um, if you haven't seen my low buy video, it will be up in the cards. So that's why I'm even more picky about what I'm getting because I am so restricted, but I might get this. I might not. We shall see. Again, I do have glosses in my collection already. I love gloss. I use a lot of glosses and I have some that I probably should be using up. But then again, I really do like how these look like some unique and interesting shades, so I don't know, maybe I'll end up picking these up. These do look quite beautiful. Next, I also want to talk about this launch from Kat Von D. Now, she is launching an eyeshadow palette, and this is going to be called the Vegan Love Eyeshadow Palette, and it contains 10 shimmery shades. They will be donating 20% of the retail price to Mercy for Animals, an international nonprofit organization dedicated to preventing cruelty to animals, which is nice, of course. Um, but here's my thing. There are a number of things which I don't like about this palette, which I will be sharing with you guys momentarily. First off, I just don't like how all these shades are metallics. For me, whenever I'm looking at an eyeshadow palette, I do like a metallic formula, yes, but I also really do like some mattes to balance it out, and yes, that is a personal preference. No, I do not require every single palette in my collection to be like to be metallic and matte, but whenever I'm looking around for a new eyeshadow palette, I do like to see a variation of matte and metallic tones. In addition to this, I feel like the fact that they have one green and one blue and one red and one yellow 
it looks a little bit too much like a palette that just is very limiting you know like i feel like whenever i'm using this palette i absolutely positively will have to dip into other shades and other palettes to complete my look and yes i'm fine with doing that but at the same time i don't want to do that every single time i pick up an eyeshadow palette does that make any sense and then the final reason for me not getting this is i can dupe every single shade in this palette from my collection that's just how it is. I can dupe this and I don't need to get something that I can already dupe. So this is not going to be a palette that I'm really interested in getting. So this is a pass. Tarte is launching a Rainforest of the Sea High Tides and Good Vibes eyeshadow palette. And this is going to be limited edition. It comes with four pressed glitters and some mattes and shimmers as well. And it's going to be retailing for $39. Looking at this color story, I don't hate it. I feel like it is one of the best color stories I've seen from Tarte in a while in the sense that it contains several cooler tone shadows and it also does contain some warmer tones, some neutrals as well. The Tarte customer does tend to be quite neutral. They seem to love their neutrals a lot and the brand does reflect that. So I think that this is a fantastic way for Tarte to push the boundaries when it comes to what they already have to basically introduce some color into their customers' lives, but at the same time making sure that their customer does have something to fall back on in the sense that they do have neutral tones in the palette, which is in my mind a good thing for this particular brand because it allows the customer to basically create some really interesting looks, but also to create some everyday friendly looks. I think that this is a palette that's all a little bit too neutral for me, but then again, I'm not the Tarte customer. Tarte is not a brand that I necessarily look to for eyeshadows, so this is not a palette that is aimed at me. So I get that they do have to include some neutral shades in here. So. Like I said, I think that this is a good palette, just not one for me and just not one that I want to get myself. Something that I do want to touch on is this new launch from Glossier. They're launching, um, I think, um, a another brand, kind of like a brand under the umbrella of the Glossier brand, which is going to be called the Glossier Play Collection. Is it Glossier or Glossier? I'm not sure. But this brand does contain several different products with the aim of creating like really beautiful, like experiment friendly looks, which I think is really pretty. I think it's really fun. They have a variety of different uh, products, including a color slide, which is a gel pencil, which comes in 14 shades for $15 each. They have a vanillic lip, which is $16 with six shades. And this is like a lacquer type of uh, lip product. They have some glitter things, a liquid highlighter, a, pen, a sharpener, and then they have a kit in which you can get like all of the different products in it for a set price of $60. Now I'm looking at this and I absolutely love this brand. I feel like it would be really fun to try out some things. I kind of want to sit back. I want to see what people are saying about this brand. I want to see what products are the standouts. I just want to consider my options before I go into buying anything from this brand. I love pretty much everything from this line, which is why I want to be so picky. I want to see what's the best of the best. And then I want to make my decision about about purchasing something from this brand. Then I want to talk about this Better Than Sex eyeliner from Too Faced. And this is a play off of their Better Than Sex mascara. And this is meant to glide over skin, shadows, and glitters with intense black pigment. I was quite curious as to what kind of a brush this liner has, and I haven't really found that information yet. I'm not really somebody who cares too much about the brush tip when it comes to liquid liners in a pen form. I really do like having liners in this type of format. It actually happens to be my favorite format to have and to work with so I feel like the fact that this is specifically aimed at going over glitters and just like shadows is something that's very appealing to me because as you guys know I wear a lot of glitter in my eyeshadow looks and a lot of times I'm like left in a little bit of an awkward situation with trying to do like a wing on top of all that glitter so this might be perfect for me because if it works 
it's going to be a liner that's specifically meant to go over glitters. So this might be something that's perfect for me. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I might get this because this actually might be amazing for my wings. Kat Von D is also coming out with a cake pencil, which is going to be a liner, a new liner coming from the brand. They have a variety of different colors. They have Trooper Black, Mad Max Brown, and Whiteout. I kind of do like the white liner. I don't own a white liner, but it might be a good idea to get one. My camera stopped recording, so that is absolutely lovely. But what I was trying to say is that I would like to go into store, maybe swatch to see how the formula is, see how opaque that white is, because I feel like if I'm getting a white liner from any brand, it has to be like a very opaque as to glide on very well. I would like for it to stay very long as well. And while we're on the topic of Kat Von D, I do want to say that for me, like Kat Von D, I feel like with all the like revelations about her, she as a person is not somebody that I can respect anymore. Uh, but I will say that I don't really think that there's any point to like canceling her brand or anything like that because it just doesn't really matter. Like if the product is good, that's great. Like don't like I don't think it's worth it to just like spend too much time like obsessing over um like whether or not to use something or get something from the brand because it just doesn't matter like i'm pretty sure that everyone can agree or most people can agree that cap on d <laughs> makes some very questionable decisions about her life and the life of her child but i do want to say that for me that's not a reason to just say that oh yeah her brand is cancelled i will say that i feel less motivated to use her brand and her products but i'm not canceling her. There's no point to do that for me. I don't want to like uh, lose out on using good products just because the owner of the brand just doesn't know how to live their life, apparently. Then I also really want to talk about this launch right here from Charlotte Tilbury. They launched an icon palette and some latex liquid lipsticks, which does look like a pretty interesting formula because this is a liquid lipstick with a glossy formula. I absolutely love this look. I feel like I really want to see some reviews and I want to see people's opinions because I love the idea of a glossy liquid lipsticks. That would be so much fun. That would be so fun to use. This palette, though, it was inspired by uh, Charlotte's, like, partying in Ibiza with, like, celebrities and all that. I don't really like this palette. I think it's a little bit too basic. Apparently, people love it. Apparently, people who bought this palette absolutely love it. I just don't like the color story. I feel like it would be fun to do a redesign because I feel like the packaging of a palette is so much prettier than the actual shades inside. That is just my opinion. But then again, this color story and this style is very Charlotte Tilbury. So there's that. I just, I don't really like the color story. I feel like it's kind of boring. So that, my friends, is it for this video right here. Those are all the brands and all the products that I want to talk about for this week. I hope that this video was interesting and enjoyable for you all. I'm going to go because I have to finish typing up an essay that I have to submit to my professor. And I also have to edit this video for you guys so I can have it up tomorrow morning. Hopefully, crossing my fingers that I'll be able to do that. But that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.